Welcome class. In this video, I will talk about relative dating. So, relative dating is used to arrange geological events in a sequence. This is achieved with the use of rock layers, just like in this example. So, relative dating, we are comparing and analyzing rocks and other samples to get a glimpse on the age of a rock. Technically, we look on rocks' relationship with other rocks, and with this, we can identify which rock is old and which rock is young. Di nga lang natin nalalaman yung mismong edad or age ng rock, pero napag, napapagsunod-sunod natin ito with the use of strat stratigraphy or the method of sequencing or reading rock layers. With relative dating, we are using different principles to sequence rock layers. And these are the following. So, you have law of superposition, law of lateral continuity, law of original horizontality, and law of cross-cutting. And, cross and take note that these laws are proposed by this man. This is Nicholas Steno. So, originally, sinabi niya to sa kanyang book at naging hanggang ngayon, uh, ginagamit to ng geologist for relative dating. The first law used in relative dating is the law of superposition. So, this law states that in an undeformed sequence of sedimentary rocks, each layer of rock is older than the one above it and younger than the one below it. Simple lang ito, sinasabi lang ng law na ito na ang rock layers na nasa ilalim ng isa pang rock layer ay mas matanda kesa sa kung anumang rock layer ang nasa ibabaw. So, in this picture, uh, if we will arrange it from oldest to youngest, the oldest is letter G dahil siya yung nasa pinakailalim. G is older than letter F. But, F is older than letter E. So, ulitin na natin sa superposition, mas matanda ka kapag nasa ilalim ng rock layer ang isa pang rock layer. Mas bata ka naman or mas bata ang isang rock layer kapag nasa pinaka itaas ito. Katulad ng rock layer A as you compared it to all the rock layers in here. So, if we will arrange this from um, oldest to youngest, we'll have G, F, E, D, C, B, A. The next law is the law of lateral continuity. This states that if layers are deposited horizontally, then it is expected that they are laterally continuous over some distance. Sa simple terms, kahit magkaroon ng erosion sa isang part ng rock layer at magkaroon ng space between them, Madali nating masasabi na magkaedad ang rock layers kahit pa separated ito across a valley or any body of water. So for example, dito sa picture na ito, the age of rock layer A na nandito sa kaliwa, this one, and the age of rock layer A na nandito sa kanan ay masasabi natin na magkaparehas. Naghiwalay lang sila dahil maaaring nagkaroon ng erosion dito sa part na ito. Next law is the law of original horizontality. This law states that the rock layers form in original horizontal position. And any deviations from this position are due to the rocks being disturbed later. Sinasabi lang ng law na to. Na originally, ang formation ng rock layers will always be horizontal, pero maaaring ma-disturb ang horizontality nito dahil sa paggalaw ng lupa. So with this principle, may kita natin ang relation ng formation ng rock layer with geological events it experience. So example sa picture na ito, originally ganito yung itsura ng rock layers DCBA. Pero nagkaroon ng tilting, maaari nagkaroon ng paggalaw ng lupa dahil sa earthquake, so the rock layers become tilted. 
So we can say that the geological event happened after the formation of rock layer A. Kasi the oldest is D, C, B, A. Pero nagkaroon ng paggalaw ng lupa after the formation of letter A which will cause the tilting of these rock layers. The last principle proposed by Steno is the law of cross-cutting. This law states that any feature that cuts across a rock layer is younger than the rock layer it cuts. Ang tinitignan natin dito sa principle na ito ay magma intrusions. Ang magma intrusion kasi ay nagaganap kapag merong volcanic activity sa isang lugar that will cause the formation or the rising of magma. So walang choice ang magma na ito kundi manghimasok or i-intrude ang rock layers na nasa ibabaw nito. It may or may not reach the surface, pero one thing is for sure, it will turn into an igneous rock. So just like here in this example, so we can say this is a magma intrusion originally, but then turned into an igneous rock. Pag in natin ang law of cross-cutting dito, masasabi natin na lahat ng madedeform ng intrusion is older than the intrusion itself. Tingin tayo sa picture. May kita natin na this layer mula dito hanggang dito. Actually, kasi as you can see, there may onting naghimasok na magma sa rock layer na nasa ibabaw. So, with this, we can say na uh, the, this layer is all the oldest and as you progress, you have this layer as the youngest. Pero, mas bata sa layer na ito, itong magma intrusion na ito. So, we can say the youngest rock formation na meron dito is this rock formation. The igneous rock formation dito sa example na ito. Now, bukod sa apat na principles na pinopose ni Steno, may mga dinagdag na techniques and geologies for relative dating. And the first one is the principle of inclusion. With this, it simply states the inclusions found in other rocks or formation must be older than the rock that contained them. Looking in this picture, may kita natin na merong inclusions sa isang buong rock layer. Example, dito sa picture A, this one. May inclusion ng sandstone sa isang granite. This is the sandstone. Yan. Sandstone ito, sandstone, 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 sandstone. So with that, we can say na mas naunang mag-form ang sandstone kumpara sa granite. Dahil may mga fragments na ng sandstone sa loob ng granite. Meaning, uh, nung nabubuo yung granite, may mga weathered sandstone na sumama sa formation nito. Kabaliktaran naman ang nangyari dito sa figure B. Uh, dito, may kita natin na merong inclusion ng granite sa loob ng sandstone. So, these are granite inclusions. So, we can say na nabuo muna yung granite na weather dito, mas lumiit dahil sa erosion and other uh, weathering agents which will cause the formation of these little stones na mai-include naman as the sandstone is being formed. So again, we can say that granite is older than the sandstone. At kabalik tara naman dito sa figure A, um, sandstone is older than the granite. Next principle is the principle of unconformity. This states that if a rock layer is missing, then there is a missing record of time or the presence of unconformity. So with this principle, more than um, pag-identify kung ano yung mas bata o mas matandang rock layer, mas tinitingnan natin dito kung bakit nagkaroon ng gap sa rock layers, meaning may nawalang rock layer. And this is because of the presence of unconformity. So kapag sinabi natin unconformity, it is a surface of non-deposition or erosion. So meaning, 
dapat may rock layer dito. Pero, na-erode, or kaya naman, uh, hindi nagkaroon ng deposition sa lugar na to, which will lead to the formation of an unconformity. So, take note, you have three types of unconformity. It could be a disconformity, an angular unconformity, and non-conformity. Dito muna tayo sa non-conformity. Kapag non-conformity, madali lang yan. Tandaan mo lang na meron kang um, non-sedimentary rock layer. So, this could be an igneous or a metamorphic rock which is followed by a sedimentary rock layer. So, meaning na expose yung metamorphic rock or igneous rock dahil sa erosion bago natabunan ng isang sedimentary rock layer. Next, angular unconformity naman kapag merong tilting ng rock layers followed by a layer of non-deposition or erosion. So, nagkaroon lang ng tilting, then maaaring na-erode yung place na ito or yung surface na ito which will cause the formation of angular unconformity. And last one is disconformity. This, with disconformity, you can say that an unconformity is in between a, re, a layer of rocks that are parallel to each other. So, itong dalawang rock layer na ito, this one na nasa ibaba at this one na nasa ibaba ay parallel sa isa't isa and in between of them is an unconformity. Last principle that we are using in relative dating is the law of faunal succession. So this law states that fossils occur in definite invariable sequence in the geological record and they can be used to identify the relative age of rocks. So simple lang to. Uh, sa rock layers, uh, hindi may iwasan na mayroong mabubuo na fossils dito. So kapag nakadiscover ang geologist ng fossils, sa isang rock layer, madali niyang masasabi kung ano ang age nito base sa faunal succession. Kasi uh, may mga klase ng animals, katulad ng trilobite, that you can easily the faunal succession or the evolution of it. So as you can see here, nag-iiba-iba yung itsura ng trilobite as you progress to younger rocks. So meaning to say, Kapag nakita mo itong rock na, uh, fossil na ito and you compare it to this fossil, then you can say that this type of fossil is older as you compared it to this one. So, ang tawag dyan is index fossils or technically, they are markers that will help you identify the age or the relative age of a rock. At madalas, ang ginagamit nating index fossils ay itong mga ito. Itong mga shells, kasi widespread sila, um, populous sila nung sila ay nabubuhay, madali sila makita, and at the same time, naglalast kasi yung mga fossils nila. So, we are using this to identify the age of rocks. Minsan, compare natin yung isang rock layer, if it compare, or it, it, if it contains an ammonite, something that looks like uh, this one, and the other one, other rock layers sa ibang position or sa ibang location, also have ammonite. Then we can say that these two rock layers have the same age. And that is the end of our lesson about relative dating. Thank you, kids.